Hello, everybody. Have a good lunch. Uh, oh, okay. Probably had too much lunch. <laughs> uh, my name is Tong Lee. Uh, uh, work for IBM. Uh, committer for Trello. So you want to talk about yourself? So my name is Manang Partney, and I am a blockchain developer. I did an internship for the Linux Foundation. And with that, in that, I worked for the Hyperledger Cello team. OK. So uh, we're going to talk about, actually, a little bit about Cello. Then we're going to dive into the, uh, the uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, fabric operator. Uh, so what, what is Cello? Um, Cello started uh, being um, a tool, actually, uh, supposed to help uh, users to deploy uh, you know, the products under a Hyperledger Foundation. So when we started, we we actually, you know, project that uh, Cello will help uh, users to deploy uh, Fabric and other uh, products as well. But it turns out that uh, the majority, majority of the developers on Cello actually all focus on Fabric, and then we kind of lost the capability of deploy other products you know, under um, uh, Hyperledger. So now, if you look at the Cello, it's mostly the agents that we have this term, agents deploy uh, fabric onto different targets, meaning either it's, they say, a Kubernetes cluster or it's just the Docker environment or some other platforms. So Cello is really a tool that uh, help you to deploy uh, fabric network at the moment. Okay. So Cello allows us to manage uh, the life cycle of a blockchain. We can uh, create, start, stop, delete nodes. We can customize a blockchain network and like configuration, like network size, consensus type, the database type. And we have uh, a few different underlying infrastructures available. Like we can deploy it on bare metal, you can deploy it on Docker, Kubernetes, etc. And we also provide advanced features like monitoring, logging, health, and analytics of our chain. So this is kind of like the architecture or design of Cello. At the top layer, we have the dashboards. And the dashboards and the core layer, both of these are connected with the APIs. Uh, the APIs are made in Django, and the core layer is also made in Python and other Node.js. So, the last layer, the, under, uh, the mo last layer is the agent layer, where uh, we can have multiple um, infrastructures like Docker. Uh, we can use Swarm. We can use Kubernetes, etc. So, what exactly is Kubernetes operators? So, operators are clients of Kubernetes API. They are like controllers for custom resources that Kubernetes have. So operator, uh, what operator do is they aim to capture the, the work of a human operator. So human operators have deep knowledge about how a system would work, how it would behave in certain conditions. So operators are basically meant to do that automatically without the need of a human. So a operator is a method of packaging, deploying, and managing a Kubernetes application. So it helps us extend these applications by providing custom configurations to them. Uh, we do it by using custom resource definitions. So this is how an operator works. So a programmer deploys a custom resource as well as a controller. So custom resource holds all the configuration details and specifications of our app, whereas the controller, it handles all the business logic. It handles all the, all the actions, all the behaviors, et cetera. So once we deploy a custom resource and a controller, uh, the controller will manage all the state, uh, stateful sets, it will manage the services, pods, secrets, etc. And it will do it um, uh, 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 in, in, in any, any actions, like uh, something happens to our pods, the controller will take charge and it will change. It will change the state. So we use operator SDK for that. Uh, operator SDK is a framework. It allows us to uh, write high-level APIs uh, and scaffolding, and, to, and it is used for scaffolding and co code generation. So with the operator SDK, we can quickly 
uh, bootstrap a new project which uses operator frame operators. So uh, this is a typical life cycle while we develop an operator using operator SDK. So uh, the foundation level is where we create custom resources, we create controllers, etc. We define them and then we can test it locally. And after we have tested it and everything is fine, we can publish the images on any hub, Docker hub or something. Then we can test it live with the cluster. The operator image lives in the cluster and it will manage uh, all, of our, uh, uh, all of our pods and other uh, resources from there. So how we utilize the framework? So we created custom resource definitions for all of the nodes for fabric, such as CA, peer, and orderer, and then we implemented controllers for them. So what controllers did was to take the specification, for example, one is here. So as you can see, the kind of this resource is a uh, certificate authority. So, and the specifications are not the usual ones you see. Uh, these, are, these are custom definitions. We made our, them ourselves. So, you can see we can provide the admin username, the admin password. We can also provide the size of our uh, certificate authority. We can also pass on certificates here. And we can uh, pass on other details, like how much. Uh, OK. I wonder how many of you guys are actually familiar with Kubernetes operator? Or, OK, we have quite a few. OK, good. The, Okay, you, you might ask, you know, there are so many different ways to deploy something, application, onto Kubernetes. Why, why do you choose to develop, you know, uh, operators to deploy Fabric? Right? You can use Helm chart. Right? You can use, I don't know, uh, just the plain old YAML files to deploy various components, let's say pods or whatever you know, PVC, all that kind of stuff. So the, the main reason why we, we, we pick the, this framework is that, you know, uh, as some of you already know, that uh, Kubernetes uh, operator is really, uh, if you develop something uh, as operator, actually those things uh, we call the uh, custom defined you know, resource. So it's become like a first class of Kubernetes resource. So you operate those resources just like you operate pods or services, those sort of things. Those are the main advantages why we pick the uh, um, operator uh, framework to develop those components that you can deploy uh, Fabric onto Kubernetes uh, environment. Uh, I just want to add, you're probably wondering why I mean, you're doing this. Okay. Yeah, so. So this is our dashboard. Uh, this is the Cello dashboard. And you can see uh, th there are multiple agents here. I created two of these agents. All, both of them are fab operator, fam operator uh, agents only. So as you can see, um, these are the peers in CA I deployed on them. So um, once you have your agent set up on Cello, uh, you can uh, deploy your nodes on there. So we have a very simple UI for doing that. All you have to do is um, give some, uh, some information about your node and provide a configuration file that, that is going to have this kind of details. So Right. I mean, to be able to actually deploy a component onto your Kubernetes cluster, you, normally you, you would uh, provide like, a, you know, uh, uh, the Kubernetes config file, right? So then you can actually access your Kubernetes cluster. So in, the, in, in this case, you, you create like uh, uh, this agent. Then you say, hey, I want to either create a CA node or a peer node or order node. So you pick different types. Then the operator itself actually will take the information, take your request, say, yep, you want a peer, then we're going to create a peer uh, node on this Kubernetes cluster. So this is what uh, Manak is showing. Yeah, so as you can see, we have three peers here and one CA. And all of these are deployed on this agent. 
uh, the agent uh, fabric operator one and yes that's it um, you can find the cello team on wiki on our rocket chat uh, all of our code is deployed on github at hypologist slash cello and uh, you can find the documentation to do all of this stuff on cello.readthedocs.io and thank you Yep. Yeah, actually we did enable TLS on it. Uh, you can see we have a TLS certificate and a TLS key, which we can also provide with the YAML file. And did you bootstrap the cryptogen and then start issuing from the CA, or did you start the CA from scratch? We start CA from scratch, then you can use CA. That's yeah. one of the reasons why we actually create the CA node first. Then you can get all your certificates. Mm -hmm. Then when you do the peer node or older node, you're supposed to provide those information. Right. I mean, those terms yeah. doesn't have to always come from your CA. You can have your own. Yeah. 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 Anyone else? And now the now agent agent in Cello's term actually is really a piece of a, a program uh, actually help you deploy those nodes. Once those nodes are actually up running, those agent goes away. So it's not something constantly running. So I I, I think we we chose a really bad term here. Uh, it yeah. Sorry about that. It, it can run on many different clusters. It's just when you create this agent, it's a piece of a program and say, hey, it's more like a configuration of your agent. Say, you have to provide some information in the points and tokens so that we know, as Cello, we know that where you want your components to run. So that's Is it. That Yeah, the yeah. agent we choose. No, no, so if, if I want, uh, say, organization one to run on cluster A and organization two to run on cluster A. You just provide different yeah. configurations. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, once your peers are up running, you still will have to go through the fabric no more, you know, join peer to channel, those sort of operations. Okay, so those are that, right, that will not be part of what Cello is doing. Cello is get your nodes up running, right? I mean, then you have the APIs to, to perform all those uh, fabric operations. So then you have the yeah. APIs to, say, install chain code or, or, or to uh, create a channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, we consider that, you know, it's outside of a cello scope. Yeah. Yes? So, Monitoring. So, so if a node on the cluster goes down, or another cluster goes down, will you actually see it? That's the advantage of using a, a Kubernetes operator. So, you know, if your node actually goes down, it will uh, start up, uh, restart, yeah, for you. Yeah, that's one of the advantages of using operator. Anything else? Well, all right. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you guys. guys.